And now, perspective from former Ambassador Roberta Jacobson. She served as U.S. Ambassador to Mexico until earlier this year, when she resigned over what she said were concerns about the Trump administration's policies toward that country. That ended a 30-year career at the State Department. Among many posts, she served as Assistant Secretary of State for Western Hemisphere Affairs during the Obama administration, during which she led the diplomatic effort to open relations with Cuba. Ambassador Jacobson, welcome back to the News Hour. Thank you, Judy. So when it comes to um, AMLO, uh, the new leader of Mexico, we've just heard a lot of conversation about whether people think he can deliver on all these promises. Is he someone you see as able to do what he says he's going to do? Well, I think that there are enormous expectations, as you say, um, and as Nick said, but I think there are also a lot of people willing to give him a chance. Um, the kinds of changes he's suggesting will take Congress, where it looks like he's going to have majorities, so that may enable him to do what he wants. But they also are the kinds of things that can't be done very quickly. Um, and so that's the real question. Will Mexicans have enough patience and enough willingness to wait for some of the changes? And, and, it, and it does sound like there's a fair amount unknown about what we can expect. Absolutely. I mean, his, his own policy pronouncements and those of his teams during the campaign were all over the map. And so there's some things that you can point to that are very reassuring on economics, on, on other subjects of importance to the U.S. But there are others that were inflammatory and of concern. So which AMLO will govern? What about, let's talk first about border security. The president, uh, President Trump, said they talked on the phone today for something like half an hour. Right. Um, what do we think he can actually get done when it comes to border security that's different from what the current Mexico government is doing. Right, and that'll be really interesting. I think, as we know, there are actually fewer Mexicans coming into the United States than leaving. So this is largely a problem of non-Mexican migrants, especially from Central America. And they go through or sometimes even stay in Mexico. So currently Mexico is helping with the return of some of those migrants. Will Lopez Obrador continue that? That wasn't a huge issue in the campaign, although what he did say did not necessarily sound encouraging in terms of help on that score. And you mentioned, you said that when it comes to the economy, you think uh, that he may well be able to do uh, what, to make some changes. Uh, we know that NAFTA is, remains a huge issue. The president is now saying we'll deal with that after the midterm elections this year. Right. I mean, what's interesting is uh, Mexico's transition and our own fall midterm elections are sort of concurrent in that he, Lopez Obrador doesn't take office until December 1. That's after our midterm. So that's the point at which formally he would sit down with the administration, although he's asked to be part, to have his team be part of any NAFTA negotiations that take place before he's inaugurated. Um, but his own potential negotiator for NAFTA has said he thinks, that is Lopez Obrador's, that he thinks that the Peña Nieto administration, the current Mexican administration, has done a pretty good job in the NAFTA negotiations. And the really tough part has been, frankly, some of the intransigent positions of the Trump administration. So it's hard to know whether that side will change or whether if the leaders get along well at the top, maybe there's more flexibility. And I want to ask about that in a minute. But before I do, just quickly, a question about corruption, mm. a huge uh, issue, a huge challenge for him in Mexico. Right. What's the real expectation there? I think the expectations there are actually among the most difficult to um, satisfy. Uh, Mexico, these electors were largely looking at the corruption issue, the security issue, and the economy to some extent, but corruption was top of mind. And there is a national anti-corruption plan in Mexico which is not fully implemented. So Lopez Obrador could move ahead on that plan aggressively, uh, set up a special prosecutor, et cetera. Um, the question is, will he? He didn't have any specific policy recommendations that came up during the campaign. 
And finally, you mentioned uh, President Trump, the relationship between the two men. As I said in the introduction, you did leave your post uh, and you were you spoken out about it because of uh, problems you had with the administration policies uh, toward Mexico. What, do you, what, is, what are you looking for between the two? Well, I think for starters, and one can only hope that today's phone call is the beginning of that, we need to see less vilification of Mexico and Mexicans by the president, frankly, and, and others in the administration. Those are the things that Mexicans were united about, uh, that they really disliked those tweets or rallying cries about Mexicans and how to characterize them, and that they're never going to pay for the wall. Those are two things they were unified on. If we can have a more civil tone, a more respectful tone, and one that recognizes how much we both benefit from this relationship, then there is the possibility of progress. So I would be looking for the two of them to have probably some similarities and get along as people, because there are some similarities, populist, nationalists, but the policy issues will remain and be very tough. Well, so much to keep an eye on at this point. Roberta Jacobson, who formerly represented the United States in Mexico, thank you very much. Thank you, Judy.